um, you know, I get up about 6.30 and I take care of the dog and do those kind of things. And then I, I kind of settle in uh, to doing some New York Times stuff. The, I do the connections and the strands and, and the mini puzzle. Um, and, and then at some point when Peggy gets up, uh, we have a cup of coffee and we're plugged in with members of our family to doing a psalm every day. And, okay. and so we kind of do that. Uh, and, and so then by the time nine o'clock comes around, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about going out on my ride. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I ride a recumbent bike outside. Uh, and usually that takes an hour. I go nine miles, five or six days a week. Um, and, and so unfortunately, when I come back, I'm, I'm tired uh, and not much interested in doing exercises. And mm-hmm. I've always been someone who, who, if I went to the Y, I was going to be there for an hour. If I was out running, I was going to run for an hour. And so these exercises that I do take an hour. And then so right. I'm trying to find an hour to do them. And it's pretty easy for me to put that off. So mm-hmm. I, I need some help with that. Okay, that poses a good dilemma. And I think we can frame this very well. So Howard, you go out and cycle with a friend on a regular basis. And knowing that that friend is going to show up, that's basically something we call a commitment device that you are more likely to engage in that cycling because he's there and, you know, he'll be there. So you're committed and that nudges you into doing that. Now, you have some friction about the other exercises, be they your strength exercises, flexibility or balance exercises, because you don't have a friend that's there. And the friction is uh, you feel that they must be done in a relatively continuous manner because that's your that's your norm. That's your expression of exercise. They must be done uh, continuously, they must be done together. If I'm committed to exercise, once I start, I shouldn't stop, etc. However, with what you've told me about your schedule in the day, we have some opportunities to be able to do some things that we call habit stacking or temptation bundling. Now, rather than getting bogged down in terms, let's make it practical. You mentioned that you might uh, engage in uh, wordle or strands or connections. What if you did one of your exercises, your sit to stands, as a key to unlock your permission to do wordle? And then you couldn't move on to strands until you did a different exercise. Perhaps that would be your, uh, your balance exercises where you're standing on the foam pad, feet staggered. And then to do connections, you had to unlock that with another exercise. So therefore, we have something that's called temptation bundling. I get to do this only if I've done that. Habit stacking can be another efficient way for you to benefit. For example, while you're doing Wordle, as you're searching for another word in your mind to trial, you might end up leaning back and sitting forward and leaning back and doing your chair sit-ups. So you're stacking one habit you like to do with one you routinely don't find time for. You're stacking the two of them together to create a connected habit. So we have a couple themes, commitment, device, habit stacking, temptation bundling. And we know that fitting that into your world where you are gonna do a Psalm and you can do some sit to stands, you can do your red cord, you can do them before and after. And the other big uh, consideration here that we talked about, the big concept is your exercises are strength, flexibility, skill, uh, and balance based. They don't benefit from being sequentially performed. You can grab them as an exercise snack here and there where they fit in conveniently in your life. So what you're telling me is that I can I can transition from the mindset of setting an hour apart to exercise to do it at various times during the day. That is 100% correct. That is right. right. And you can and go ahead. So my question would be, um, are, you know, is there any 
is there any, um, uh, well, I can't remember the, the word, but uh, do I do these exercises in a particular manner, one right after an, another uh, with maybe strength, maybe balance, or can I do, I mean, is there any line, any, any, uh, Gosh, I'm sorry that I'm having so much trouble. Is there an order of operation? That's, that's what sure. I'm looking for. That's a, it's an excellent question. You framed it just fine for me to understand what you were looking for. And I'll tell you, there's only one asterisk to consider here. And that is this. The exercises that you won't have the energy to do because you feel that you're too tapped out from your biking or you feel that you would be at risk for performing because you're fatigued from cycling, I would encourage you to consider implementing some of those before you bike. With that exception, because we know the biking is within your figurative and literal wheelhouse. You have extra energy going into it. The cyclist that you uh, meet to bike with, you are not maxing out to stay up with him. So, Consider doing some of the more challenging exercises before biking because you are unlikely to get to them afterwards. With that exception, there's no specific order of operation. Then it becomes you just choose the exercise that moves you. And that's what's really nice is you have the autonomy to be able to say, I feel like doing some sit-ups. I feel like doing some sit-to-stands. Where's that red cord? Uh, where are my bands? I I'm standing next to the pad. This is convenient now. Go grab it, just like you have an appetite or a hunger or a hankering or a craving for a snack, establish the same for an exercise. You know, we talked earlier about your videos and you're talking oh. about strength, balance and flexibility. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is I don't have to do all of the strength exercises at the same time. I don't have to do all of the balance exercises at the same time. And I don't have to do all the flexibility exercises at the same time. I won't even attempt to reiterate that. You've spoken it perfectly. Okay. Well, that that, that makes sense. That's uh, that, that's really a, a good lesson for me to take forward here until the next time that we talk. Yeah, that's excellent. Howard, your time uh, going through this in detail has been formative, and I hope that uh, our information reviewing this will additionally be helpful for other people that are facing uh, the same dilemma. Well, I hope so too.